Legion by Lenovo. Well, hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to a special Tuesday edition of the Chisholm Invitational. Now, as we know, last week things were a little bit rocky and we couldn't get the game to you that we wanted to because of technical difficulties. However, where there is a will, there is a way. And now Hedgie and I are back to bring you that matchup that we were going to see before. And guess what? It's not even pre-recorded. We're catching this one live as we're about to get Adrian United taking on La Squadra. Yeah, should be an exciting matchup, obviously, as we near the end of the season, the start of the playoffs, have another exciting matchup on the way. Yeah, this is going to be a fun one. This is going to be a unique one as well, because we've gone across the pools to bring you this matchup. The last week, of course, of the Chisholm Invitational before the playoffs was a situation where we decided to mix up some of the pools, mix up some of the standings. And we have a team from Pool B taking on a team from Pool C in a bit of a cross-region matchup, not to mention two teams towards the bottom of their respected pools looking to kind of rise up and put forth a stronger performance today. Yeah, well, both teams looking for their second win, so we'll have to see which one can actually grab it in the end. That we will. As we take a look at our lineups right about now, we can sort of see, starting, of course, with Andrian United, uh, this lineup consisting of Ella, Whaley's, Perry, Perry Y, uh, Lapel, Lapislaz. I'm going to get these names wrong, I apologize. And, of course, Sleepy Bunny, that one. That one's going to be easy to remember. Yeah, you know what? I like the names. I hope that's referring to whales because whales are awesome animals, all right? A lot of interesting facts. But uh, overall, you know, a lot more kills than I'm getting, all right? You know, 4.6, 4. I average about 0. 0.1. So, you know, pretty hype on, on on that list there, you know? Yeah, fair enough. And then they are going <laughs> to be taking on La Squadra in this matchup today. La Squadra could be a little bit more of a veteran team in this. Their overall experience in this game, a little bit more than their opponents, consisting of... SBC Imens. I mean, they all have SBC in front of their name, so I, I'm not going to read it out all the time, but it's going to be Klezmini, a Shadow of Erebus Dragon coming in as a sub in the mid lane from the other team, actually, uh, from that same school. Davum 8, as well as V Bucks Jacob. So it's going to be an interesting team for sure, especially because, again, a little bit of a sub. Uh, Cleric isn't going to be in. Instead, it's going to be Dragon playing in the mid lane. Yeah, and Shadow has a pretty good KDA there, obviously getting 8.8 assists a game. Obviously, pretty good jungler there, um, having a lot of those assists and probably helping his team a lot out in those lanes as well because of that. Yeah, so we'll be excited to see how these two match up. Now, before we kick off into our pick phase, I want you to remember that I'm saying pick phase right now. I'm not actually saying pick and bans. There's been a little bit of a change in the shakeup for this one. Due to the individual players' levels and champion pools, we were unable to do a draft pick for this matchup. We are going to be going straight into blind. And, well, as soon as we are ready to jump into it, it's going to be a bit of a flurry, I feel, Hedgy. Normally, we're used to going through these picks one at a time, but we're just going to get essentially 10 champions thrown at us out of nowhere. Yeah, obviously it's not like, you know, you're, you're up, the, up down thing, you know, you're not really countering the matchups, you're just picking a champion going for it, which is pretty cool to see, and you know, uh, fun fact about Blind Pick, did you actually know that it's uh, named after Lee Sin? You really wanted to force that joke in there, yeah, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to be uh, Captain Straight Face and say, well, actually, the mode existed before Lee Sin was a champion in the game, so that is factually incorrect, uh, I thought you knew better than yeah. that, oh well, maybe next time you'll figure it out. Either way, yeah, we are ready to go. So as soon as we see the players to start up that match, we will kick it off. If they're listening at all, Sleepy Bunny, you're currently the captain. It's on you, or like it's supposed to lobby head. Kick us off. Uh, click the start game button. Um, and then, yeah, we will get into it. I'm, I'm very curious, though, to see how Blind Pick is actually going to affect this matchup. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, when I've played a few blind picks in my time, you know, I'm always really scared about my runes in particular because I'm like, oh, no, I'm going to take armor and then there could be an AP champion or something. So it's a, it's a bit of a toss-up in that one. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, you yeah, know, it's a bit of fun. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, at least you get to pick a champion that you want to play uh, rather than, you know, sometimes you, you kind of see, oh, oh, they've picked, you know, maybe an engaged jungler or something. I might pick Sejuani and get a count to that. But, you know, that's a lot more boring than just picking whatever champion you want, right? Absolutely, it can be, as we're seeing, as expected, everyone locking in champs fast and furious, kind of all over the farm with this one. I'm seeing Akshon, I'm seeing Ziggs, Gwen coming in there. Meanwhile, a Shaco possibly going to be locked in as the jungle on oh, no. our red side, Pike as well. 
I, I'm not thinking that people were kind of coming in in champion order just because Lapis Laz on that Nunu probably isn't going to bot lane and I somehow doubt Sleepy Bunny is going to be taking a Nami into the jungle. But when I look at this blue side, I do sort of struggle. Who, who is going where over here? Okay, I think Ashkin's going mid, Ziggs is going to be bot lane, and then Nami obviously support Gwen top and Nunu jungle. So. You know, they've got some uh, some pretty interesting champions. A lot of AP. They only have Ashkin for AD, which should be interesting, uh, particularly into a Mundo. So that's a bit of an interesting one there. Um, on the other side, you've got a Shaco, which is one of my most hated champions in the game. So um, that's an interesting one there. Uh, and then Pike as well, which is a very, very high mechanical champion. You don't see him much in uh, many levels of play. He's a pretty unique champion, but a hell of a lot of fun to play. Yeah, it's going to be a fun match for sure when we do get onto this rift. I mean, it's going to be an interesting one because not only is it blind pick, but you don't really find out what your opponents are playing until you get onto the yeah. rift as well. So it's this sort of like pre-game planning, planning phase, it, it becomes that much more difficult. I, I am going to kind of maybe think maybe we'll be seeing the Ziggs in mid, actually, and perhaps Whaley's is going to be taking the Akshan in bot. I haven't had a chance to cast an Akshan game, though, so I'm kind of excited. Like, is Akshan actually a better mid in this situation than a bot laner? Yeah, yeah, I think he is a bit, a bit, bit of a better mid laner. Um, just over on the bot lane, probably doesn't have the damage output because he has a lot of utility. So I think having him in the mid lane makes a bit more sense. But I think he can also go ADC. So it just depends on kind of the, the matchups and that sort of stuff. Um, at the same time, I think Ziggs is better in the bot lane than mid lane just because of the way the champion works. So um, I think it'd make a bit more sense for Ashkin to go mid. But we'll have to see what they actually do. I believe the players are at least uh, mid lane uh, is playing the Ashkin and the uh, ADC is playing is playing the the Zig, so that should make sense for that. But I'm just hoping, you know, on the red side that they've got some AP, uh, you know, defense. Oh, sorry, um, yeah, magic, uh, magic defense. Because uh, if they don't, they might be in a bit of trouble. <laughs> yeah, they could be. I mean, it seems like a pretty straightforward build, especially for um, Klezmini, uh on that Mundo to really just stack that magic resistance in this one the mr is going to be absolutely critical i feel although it's a bit unfortunate because if you go too hard in that build path you could be playing right into ella on this gwen who is very very good at cutting down tanks yeah absolutely so obviously uh yeah gwen is a very very good champion and i mean she just has so, such good damage over time as you're saying as well with the conqueror uh, she just stacks it up uh so she will be very annoying but yeah i mean i'm looking at this mundo obviously the big tank uh, into champions that aren't as uh, aren't as good at doing damage over time, so he will be quite strong here. So I think that will be a really good pick here, probably the best pick overall in this uh, situation. But other than that, should be interesting. There's a lot of uh, fun kind of solo QE champions, so I'm interested to see uh, how they all perform on the Rift. Yeah, it's going to be exciting to catch for sure, as we are going to be going to our spectator delay. But when we come back, we'll be on the Rift in for some action. Again, it's going to be Andrian United taking on the Squadra when we return.
30 seconds until minions spawn. All right, welcome back. We are on Summoner's Rift for our matchup again on that blue side. As previously mentioned, Andrian United, La Squadra. Meanwhile, in red, probably our favorites in this game. And we're already seeing perhaps that experience advantage, or in this case, disadvantage coming into play as uh, Lapis Lads might be missing a critical summoner if they want to jungle efficiently. Yeah, it uh, doesn't have that smite, so that will be interesting, obviously. Uh, just a bit lower in the level area, so uh, that will be uh, a bit of an annoyance. In clearing those jungle camps, you don't get nearly as much XP, so they have to figure out some sort of strategy, maybe a double lane and top lane or something to try to counter that. Uh, but it'll be very interesting to see how that one plays out. Also, just not having some flashes uh, on some of the other members as well will be a bit detrimental, but, you know, I've definitely seen... Uh, seen a lot worse come together so we'll have to see what they can do uh, in these lanes and obviously the combat power that you do get from those uh, extra summon spells when you actually don't have flash can actually be really hard as well yeah as we did see you know an interesting approach right there with shadow of erebus as well on that shaco in the jungle it didn't quite look like all of the jack in the box were hitting their marks bot lane still going straight at it a nice little hook on the pairwise oh, and that's gonna be first blood secured by davum sleepy bunny flashed upon by v bucks jacob however no follow-up damage to be found except for a nice little shot out of davum first blood though going to the red side yeah, it's actually a really nice hook obviously it's the same with the fight of their verb mechanically oh Another hook! Champion. Okay. Two for two, V-Bucks Jacob on a bit of a spree right now, and that's two kills right into the bank of Davlin for sure. This Caitlyn is being poised for a very strong game. Absolutely, obviously Pike. So good at being able to set up his teammates for success, and when you do hit those hooks consecutively, obviously, there's a bit of... The minions were in the front. Okay, that was a... Um, second, not an easy champion, but oh my... Oh, more hooks, more picks, and more kills being secured. 3 and 0, oh, and we're less than three minutes in for Davum right now. And let's just talk about how scary a fed Caitlyn can become because it looks like that could be the direction this game is going. Now, Davum coming into this matchup was the player with the most experience. How troubling is this going to be for Adrian United? Yeah, obviously, it's not a great signing. Caitlyn is a very good champion at taking down switch targets. And if you look on the enemy team, there are just as many tanks, so she will definitely be. Very, very scary force to be reckoned with, and with three very early kills, obviously, in the first three minutes into the game, that is going to be really hard to deal with. Um, like, just being able to set her up. Like, doesn't really need gold as well. Oh. To be, be sure. like, that was a flash engage out of Whaley's right there, trying their best to chase down Dragon. It was a bit of a rough play, though, without any mana available. It was always going to be a bit of a tough oh. ass. Meanwhile, back in that bot lane, Sleepy Bunny. Kind of taking a breather, it looks like, in one of the bushes. Not to mention Ow. Lapis Laz on low health right now. Was able to keep a couple Krugs, but without that smite, you can see the sustainability not quite there. And this jungler from the Andrian United having a bit of a rough time. Yeah, having a bit of a rough time, but hasn't died yet, all right? So at least trying to survive. But yeah, it is very, very hard without the smite, obviously. It's really struggling to take those camps in the jungle. Uh, yeah, like getting more and more orcs. Yeah, that's a nice hook straight into the stun on Sleepy Buddy and walking into the trap will mean a fourth kill secured by Davum right there. This bot lane continuing to snowball. Oh. Parawai maybe sneaking around a bit too long. Satchel Charge throws V-Bucks Jacob under the tower and nearly got Parawai a kill on the return. That's it, Davum with the sniping shot will now be 5-0 on the day. Yeah, doing very, very well on this Caitlyn. Snuck people down and again, maybe a pick up the noon or... A level one dude. That's a risky play. Meanwhile, Gank Hackmaning up in mid lane as well. Dragon's actually going to get the stun, but it looked like Shadow Sparebus may have pulled away. Whaley's going to try and burn some time, but burning is the key word because they have been ignited and they will go down. Dragon secures the kill. Yeah, really, really good there. I thought uh, he might actually even be able to take that. He's really got very long health, but he does just survive. Oh. Oh. Goes with the Q. Nice Aqua Prism right there, and it does work out. And it looks like Lapis Laz, I think, has given up on the jungle. And we're now going to be running a three-man bot for Andrea, and that could get me because Jacob caught out of the lane. They'll go into this one, the damage from Travel but actually get the kill back. Now it's by Airbus on the plate right now, but can't decide to attack the fire from the center of Secures that kill, V-Bucks Jacob tries to get the stun of Lady Bunny, but doesn't actually need it as Davum goes godlike. 7-0-1, and, and we're not even five and a half minutes into this game. Yeah, uh, really, really strong on that. Man, so much damage, and obviously, as I was saying, very good against squishy targets, so being able to knock down these low-level 
players and definitely a very, very strong early game ADC and with the help of a pike, so many of those hooks. Really nice gank from Shaco there as well to get the flank uh, through that tri bush. But pick up more and more kills and plates as well. And one of the greatest things about Caitlyn isn't even her killing with Lumbia, it's actually her ability to knock down turrets. Um, and it's why she's seen so much of a presence in pro play over the years, just for her ability to, to crit those uh, turrets over and over again, get plates, roam around the map, go to mid lane, uh, do it again and again and again. Is very, very strong champion because of it in that situation. Absolutely will be. And now as we see a first back, Hedgy, we just passed the six minute mark. This Caitlyn already has a collector. That's going to be massive. That's not another gameplay happening in the mid lane. Whale is pushing that lane a bit too far forward. Will be run down. As we see V-Bucks Jacob feeling very ambitious, trying to actually pick a fight without that AD carry to support the support. Still though, a collector under six minutes in. That is a terrifying prospect, I feel like, for Andrea and United to try and handle. Yeah, I think like 90% of this goal is through that ADC as well, so that is going to be very, very dangerous. Oh, it's going to be a two-man oh. stun out of V-Bucks, and Davim is just hitting like a truck right now. Shadows of Erebus tries to arrive to help. Not really needed, my friend. This bot lane can handle itself right now. 9-0 for Davim. V-Bucks Jacob, though, I have to admit, has just been hitting every single ability. It feels like playing this Pike on the edge, and this bot lane duo putting in so much work. Yeah, doing really, really, really well. Um, and obviously, yeah, you can't just talk about the Kaelin who's getting all these skills. You have to talk about the Pike as well. He's hitting so many of these hooks. Double stun there on the engage. Really, really well played. And setting up his ADC for, for success. And it's a role of a support at the end of the day. You want to set up your teammates. If that's the ADC, if that's your jumper. Trying to get vision in the enemy jungle or trying to get those picks. That's what you want to do. You want to set up your teammates for success. And that's exactly what he's been doing all the landing phase. And this Kaelin, he's absolutely massive. Of it. And now I can't help but one way. Does ult. Sleepy Bunny goes back to the base right now. Vanguard's edge also used in mid lane. Whaley's trying to kite back underneath the tower. We'll be safe under there for now. And we can take a little bit of a shot back. All right, that did a bit of damage. Nice use of the comeuppance, but wasn't really enough to turn that fight around as well. He's actually oh. going to hook shot forward. This is so risky against Morelia, but the stun doesn't connect. It does not matter. Whaley's not in position to kite. Does get ignited, and that's going to be another kill going Dragon's way. Meanwhile, Davin, that's an ace in the hole, and the Woody, the Woody Woolly. <laughs> I wanted to say the Woolly, man, but that's not right as well. The, the Abominable Snowman, whatever species Willump is, uh, does go down, and that's going to be Davin picking up another right there. What? What is the name of... It's, it's definitely not a woolly <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't think it is. <laughs> yeah, Sleepy Bunny's in a lot of trouble right here. Nowhere to go. Shadows of Air, but I'm sick of Davum getting all the kills. I want one myself. It actually looked like as well. That was Death from Below used by uh, V-Bucks Jacob, but it's not saying that it was, so maybe be correct on that. Uh, either way, another nice pickup for this bot side of the map. Currently looking at a 17-0 kill lead, not even nine minutes into this game, and this is turning into a bit of a one-sided affair. Just look at the damage from the Caitlyn, and look at the situation in mid lane. Shadow of Erebus actually surrounded by two members from this blue side, but here comes Dragon, and here comes the damage from Dragon as well. Getting a flash out of Whaley, Shadow of Erebus trying yeah. to throw these daggers, but they just don't seem to hit that that same level that Dabble does down flat. By the way, that tower, not long for this world. Yeah, definitely. Um, they are quite low in health and mind though, so maybe overstaying their level is that fair to uh, You know, maybe, but also maybe not. And Sleepy Bunny has just found out. Whale's able to sidestep the stun. Might be okay. Looking to escape from Dragon Shadow of Erebus. Actually needs to be careful right here. Those daggers don't do that much damage. They might need to pick up some more items before they can really commit to those fights. And Ashkin getting very, very close in a number of these kills. If the bunch almost getting picked. Picking picks. I like how the control ward was placed there just to make sure that there was no vision um, put down as all right, we're using come up into my cooldown right now in the mid lane. Apparently, out of Whaley's just wants to constantly get that harass on the dragon any way possible. However, with that bot tower gone, this is going to be a dark day ahead for Andrea and United because now Davum and V Bucks Jacob can roam around the map. Yeah, definitely. And this is the strength of the game. We're going to to other lanes. The objective is really, really strong in the early game. Taking down those as an abundance of kills. Uh, she does. Very dangerous. Oh no. Sleepy Bunny running for her life right now. She's going to be safe actually underneath the tower. But it's Parawai who's going to be in danger as well as Whaley's and Lapis Lab. Shadow and Dragon 
going ahead, dropping the Vanguard's head, looking to chase things down, back down on the bottom. I think his buddy is found, goes down, similarly in that mid lane, Lapis Laz gets taken down as well. Dragon and Davum picking up kills respectively. 12 now for the Caitlyn, only four for the Aurelia, and I say only, only, yet we're only 11 minutes into this game, Hedgy. Yeah, um, and that Dark Harvest is just doing wonders for this Caitlyn, obviously getting so many stacks and like, getting so much extra damage. Oh, this is, uh, you know, I like the idea in theory and practice that was never going to work, not at this stage of the game. Good attempt from Perry Y, but yeah, Davum is a bit too big right now. It's leaking money. It's about to find out. This is with the Aqua Prism. Stands on the trap and waits to get hooked before falling herself. Two more kills for Davum, and now it's snowball time. That makes contact. Davum actually flashes away from the level 4 Nunu. Really wanting to play this safe and wait for V-Bucks Jacob to get the hook. Death from below doesn't make contact because guess what? Lapis has already fallen. 15-05 currently for Davum on the Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I think this whole game should be described in the yard. Oh. Yeah, let's just add another one. 16-05 for Davum on the <laughs> And is it going to be 17? Sleepy Bunny. Oh, took a deep breath before stepping forward. A bit of ebb and flow. And guess what? Got away with it. Got a little bit of damage without taking anything back. Oh, here they go. Uh, well, of course, it's going to be a deep snowball. And now the hook is going to take Lapis even deeper. Dabla picks up another kill. That's 17. Sleepy Bunny ebbing and flowing and trying to stay alive. Oh my goodness, that crit. A double kill going over to Davum. 18 5 on the Caitlyn. That I'm gonna move to the Rift Herald, Shaco doing a good job to keep him drawn all, all of these objectives, get the cloud free, get the Herald to in place again. What? In the top lane. Oh yeah, top lane getting happening right now, and also with my first scary point is. Ayla trying to get the in, but that Rundo a bit too tanky right now, and with Shadow arriving will be an easy kill picked up. Uh, fun fact, Caitlyn is currently sitting on 4,300 gold. So that's going to that be another completed fact, item next like, time that she backs. Is that a fun fact? Like, would you describe it as fun? I, I think it's fun for La Squadra. Yeah, I can agree. I mean, but that, why yeah. back, though, when you can continue to farm and continue to push and continue to just t uh, not only take aggro from three members of the other team down to that boss side, but actually continue to apply pressure with it. By the way, uh, that is number 19 now for Davum, who I think is going to be looking for the record for the most kills in a single game in this tournament. Shadow of Erebus able to find one up above on to Whaley's right now. And I feel bad for Klesmini right now because they are just vibing in top lane, right? Like, the game hasn't really been happening up there, but it's just been so dramatic on the bot side that by the time this top tower falls, I mean, it already feels like we're moving into mid and possibly late game. Yeah, um, obviously it's kind of an island up there. Learn a lot of the time here. Hi, Elo, you know, oh, it's a bit of an island in the top lane, you know, they'll do much. This is one of those situations. They have just been chilling, farming, five and out. I think Mundo's even got himself a blue buff. Oh, he's gonna actually flash away from the Gwen damage. That obviously a lot of burst on that Gwen. He's been scared. Hex -flash. Actually happening, but yeah. He has Hex Flash. Right? Hex -flash. I just wanna, I just wanna point that out. Uh, I, I, I don't think I've ever seen that before. No, um, definitely something. Thank you for the in the moment. So, yeah, I'm here to offer all the so that takes that meanwhile, uh, the nothing's mid. happening in the mid lane, but I don't think it's going the way Whaley's was hoping for. Dragon is taking quite low, Flash is burned, but that's still going to be Dragon on the hunt. Meanwhile, damn, he's just going to go ahead and continue to sit in that lane. Davum doing a good job right there as Dragon does find the rain cage on the Whaley's, picks up that kill. Nice use of the Fox to L up here for a brief moment as the lane. Actually wants to be more involved in this game, helps the jungler get a kill. Nice use of the meanwhile down below, Death from below, back to Feebox and Jacob. Actually, it's a rare kill for this fight, gets the double, but won't be able to get oh, the triple. The first kill is secured. Oh. It's going to Lapis Flash, who gets one for the side of Andrian United. Lapis Flash gets one for the side of Andrian United. Spike there under the turret. Just that bit, dude, Jake, just that bit. Just that's what we're trying to defend it. I don't think it's for the ultimate. Oh! 
Okay. Well, two shots gets it done, apparently. 21-0 on Davum, who I think should be looking to back, I would imagine, soon. Sitting on nearly 6k gold, has Whaley's and Parawai just sitting there waiting. And, like, this Caitlyn completely isn't the knowledge yet. Yeah, she knows they're there. And is now going to look to back. What kind of toys oh, is Caitlyn excited. returning to lane with? Are like, you just, like, mythic? Yeah, okay, Kraken. Maybe... Oh, just a... Oh, my lord! <laughs> Oh no, that's a lot of that's a lot of damage. Yeah, geez. that's a lot of damage right there. And we're gonna be adding as well to it a cheeky little infernal Drake as well, being secured by Shadow of Erebus. Just how hard is this Caitlyn going to hit? I am scared right now for Andrew and United as up in the top side, Lapis, yes, they're trying to focus on the way. Can't get too much from up and used on V-Buck Jacob for minimal damage. And it's sort of like, you know. I'm looking at that map. I'm I'm waiting to see what is going to happen as soon as this Caitlyn arrives. Shadow of Erebus still going behind, jumping right on Parawai. He's low to react. Whaley has to go forward to get their hook forward. And that might already have found one two shot. One Wait. shot! Oh, buddy. Davum has returned, getting a double kill. 23-0 at 6. This Caitlyn just cannot be stopped. Two punch coming from Davum this time around. He will just start wailing away at that tower. One use of that sniping ability and then an auto secures the kill. Looks like V-Bucks Jacob went in a little bit too deep right there. Now Davum down to half health. The snowball on the way, not going to be used in lane. And Davum might be looking to bounce back now. In case you haven't noticed, that is a dark harvest on the Caitlyn as Ella might be getting surrounded and going it down as well. I'm just doing a quick little peek. 28 stacks turned on this Caitlyn. Uh, so, almost as big as Stack Shadow uh, is going to go ahead and sacrifice the float. Give another kill over her Davum right there. It actually turns into a double for Shadow, who's looking to catch up to the Caitlyn. 26 0 and 7, 6 0 7, 6 0 1. It's just a lot this. of high score lines right now on the Lin Squadra side. Go to front. Oh, I didn't notice Pike. Pike has actually gone down to the gate at the same time. Yeah, yeah, Pike died on the tower. As Davum will pick up another one. There we go. Uh, 27 0. We're getting close to 30. Oh, get excited. Actually, get that 30 mark. I don't think I've ever got. Have I? That's actually really interesting. Oh, that was last one. Straight after Davum will be found. Now, Sleepy Funny will be the next victim of this Caitlyn, who just keeps auto-ing away. Why not make it a triple? There you go. We're at 30, Hedgy. And it looks like the Squatcher is continuing to push. They actually might be thinking, hey, let's see if we can end this game. Or, well, they could have been if Davum hadn't actually failed to go mid lane. Attack. Attack. Oh, there you go. You got the knockup. You did it. Um, unfortunately, the damage not right there to follow through, but Lapis Lapis does get some damage onto this Caitlyn. And he must take him off the flight another kill as well. Oh, come up it! Almost does enough work to get the pike down, but now Whaley's might be in a bit too deep, and that's ironic considering while well, he's still in his own base. Yet here comes Davum. Here comes Shadow of Erebus recalling in the base. Davum actually stopping the bar as Whaley's looking for a potential re engage. Got sniped! Nice! Davum, good game sense right there. 32 0 and 7 on this game, but no mana though. Can the continue? But we got a snowball down here. Snowball line doesn't get Davum. But the title win was also talked as well. And this Caitlyn continues to auto down. Lapis doesn't get to that back line, but immediately falls to Fairwise. And Sleepy Bunny are the last two defenders standing. They find the Shake Clone, but they don't find the right target ace. And the hole gives a triple over to Davum. And that should be the game in the theory. Whaley's will spawn in one second. It'll be a bit of a desperate attack. But I don't think that this axe shot can do too much. That's going to do it in 20 minutes. Pretty much on the dot. 57 kills to two.
and the victory goes to the Squadron. Yeah, you gotta be impressed with this Kaelin, obviously. Just doing so much damage. 35 kills is the final count. Definitely gets my MVP. Really, really good performance there. But also the Pike, you can't forget that Pike, obviously, setting up the Kaelin very, very early in the laning phase, getting a bunch of those hooks landing uh, constantly. So just really, really good performance from uh, that bot lane. And, you know, can't forget the rest of the team as well. They obviously helped out with those ganks, with that control on the objectives as well, and just knocked down those targets really, really quick and ended the game as quickly as they could. Yeah, it was a very strong game. And I, I, I see you're kind of leading towards Daphim to that MVP. And it's really hard to disagree. Yeah. I wanted to go V-Bucks Jacob. I was thinking V-Bucks Jacob actually for a majority of that game. However, uh, as we did move on, I... I Felt like V-Bucks got a little bit too aggressive, actually gave a couple kills over. And then I look at 35-08 and like, how can MVP not be Daphne? But here comes the difficult discussion. Who are we looking at for Ace right now? Because it was a tough game on that blue side. And I, I feel like I want to give it to Ela for, you know, actually yeah. being able to somewhat farm successfully. I'm sort of curious on your thoughts, though. Yeah, I think I'll go Ela. Obviously, like, didn't really contribute to the to the bot lane, uh, what was happening there. So probably going to go with Ela. Um, you know, I thought, you know, Lapis did a pretty good job without the smite, actually, to try to try to uh, try to force some plays bot lane and stuff. So obviously, very, very hard uh, to play the game without smite. So was doing her best there. But uh, yeah, I think Ela was also quite good in that top lane, just farming up, just doing okay. Um, obviously had pretty good CS, but yeah, I'd, I'd probably go with Ela there. Yeah, very well played from Ela. all things considering. It was a very, very tough match for them. Uh, that being said, I do think it's time we move on because, well, well then, the Keeper is coming. But also, it's been a very interesting day so far. So with the sort of group stage now finished and moving on into the next stage of the tournament, the knockdown stage, I have to kind of wonder, what are we going to be expecting from our top eight teams? Because unfortunately, the two teams we saw today, they're not going to be playing any further. This was their last match of the Chisholm Invitational. But our top eight now, playoffs starting tomorrow, in fact, are we going to be expecting a significant raise in the competition? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's going to be really exciting. Um, obviously, some of the better teams will be there tomorrow. And yeah, we'll just have to see how they do. Obviously, we've seen some of the better teams in the tournament um, on the, some of these streams as well. Um, the Sharks in particular, I'm really excited about the Cyber Sharks. Um, I think they may be one of the favorites going into the playoffs. And yeah, but we'll just have to see uh, what the teams have in in, the, in them uh, in those quarterfinals. And obviously, in the next few weeks leading up to the, the grand finals. So really, really exciting stuff. And yeah, we'll just have to see what each team can do, what each, uh, each team can bring to the table in, in draft, uh, in, in the game as well. Yeah, it's going to be exciting to watch them throw down. And that's all going to be starting next week at 4.30 at, you know, same bad time, same bad place uh, here at the Chisholm Invitational. This is going to be the Twitch channel to watch one last time, though. A big thank you to Lenovo Legion for helping put this tournament together and providing so much in allowing us to compete uh, in this type of situation, especially with, you know, being able to do it remotely has been absolutely fantastic, all things considered. I'd love to be there in person. We're going to have to wait till Torrens University Day for that to happen, which, by the way, a thank you to them as well for providing the location for what will be our grand final happening in just under two weeks, in fact. Oh, I'm getting oh, yeah. excited for that. And last but not least, a huge thank you to Summoner Society as well, providing some prizing and artwork for our top four finishing teams. On that note, until tomorrow, Hedgie. And everyone watching at home, I'll catch you all out there on the Rift. Have a good day, everybody. Legion by Lenovo.